When it comes to data and big headlines and attention grabbers, well, sometimes you have to look a little deeper than just what you're seeing to get you to click on that video or that article. Today, I'm going to take a look at March's numbers, the numbers, what that means, and take a step back or two steps back and show you just a much bigger picture than what is being reported. And then we can take a look and talk about the crash that wasn't there, maybe the crash that won't be there. Now, this provided again by the Cromford Report is comparing March 2022 to March of 2023. Now, if you look here, active listings are up 206%. Now, I can do a video with the headline, active listings up 200%. It is falling, run for your lives, and the market is completely bottoming out. However, at one point, the listings were up over 300%. So again, something to keep in mind. Now, we are still far below the normal range of listings from where we should be, and more on that later. Um, right now, listings under contract, 9,000, down 26%. Now, normal is 11,000 to 13,000 listings under contract. However, even though we're around 9,000 right now, that is almost double from last quarter where we are right around 5,600. So again, there's, there's more to these numbers and stats that are coming out. And I'm not saying they're wrong, but you have to look at more than one data point and more than just one avenue. Uh, monthly median sales price, 417, that is down from last year. And that is what, uh, I mean, we're aware of that, but it also doesn't show that it is up from the last few months from where we were. So again, that may be good for you, bad for you, but just how the numbers are reported and interpreted. And then, uh, you know, we hit our peak in 2022 around May, give or take, right before rates started to go up. Um, but I think it's a good thing that we did fall. Uh, closed sales down 27%. Monthly sales Sixty, almost sixty-five hundred, sixty-four, sixty-six. Now, if you're looking at where that was, you know, last month that was at fifty-nine hundred. Last quarter, you're at forty-six, sixty-three. Now, this time last year, you were at ninety-seven, sixty-two. So yes, you definitely below from last year. But that's what we're talking about. That's what we're comparing, right? In this chart, this graph is comparing it to last year. But something again, just keep in mind. Now, also, when it comes to closed sales, and you see that number, it's more than your, just your traditional owner-occupied buyers. You know, your, your eye buyers, your hedge funds, open doors, offer pads, Blackstone, places like that, they completely slowed down the amount of homes they were buying. And that was a, a big sector in our market. So if you didn't know that and you were just looking at these numbers, you would think, oh, well, yeah, it's, look at these numbers. The, the market is awful until you get into it for yourself as a buyer or a seller and truly understand what is going on. Then when you look at median days before accept a contract, so 32, up from five days in 2021, seven in 2022. So again, if you just reported on that difference, it'd be, oh my gosh, this is taking forever. But if you look further back, it's actually relatively normal. Um, and then day supply of inventory, 67 days. So if no homes were listed, it would take 67 days before all of those homes sold up from pretty much two weeks from what it was in 2021 and 2022. Now, when it comes to new listings, so in March, it was the lowest amount of new listings in the last 23 years. So supply and demand has a lot. Yes, rates do go up uh, a little over a point from February to March, and that did affect some buyer demand, but we just don't have enough homes for sale. Let's click over to our MLS, and this is how many single-family detached homes are under 11,000. Now, in the fall, that number was over 17,000, almost 18,000, and we have since consistently been pulling back in the amount of homes for sale. Now, if you're wondering what it was when the market was insane, sub 5,000. And with 80,000 realtors in the area, um, <laughs> a lot of agents weren't getting fed, and that's why we've also seen a huge reduction in agents and lenders and it's not just here in phoenix metro but across the country when i'm talking to my colleagues or former colleagues who've gotten out it's just it's the nature of the beast now in that chart that graph uh, infographic i shared before it said yes 
listings are up 200%. But if you take a step further, they're actually up over 300%. But still, even with those numbers, we are still down from where we should be. As I just showed, we have under 11,000 single family detached homes for sale. And listings have declined almost 30%. That's the fourth lowest supply since 2005. So and the reason I'm talking about all this is just so you can look at more than just what is reported and just big media, maybe what you're hearing in your own circles of the crash. And depending on how you want to you know, define what a crash is, yes, where there is some pullback we've had from where it was, and I think that's a good thing. I think prices still need to come down, but the trend is not going that direction. The trend is going up. The trend is prices are increasing, um, even though there isn't as much buyer demand. This the actual supply of homes is enough or not enough to meet the low buyer demand. And that is keeping inventory low and also keeping inventory low. And it's something that I mentioned quite a bit is you have sellers who are reluctant to put their homes on the market. I mean, why would you, if you're a seller and you bought your home in 2019, where the average home price was $394,000 and the average rate was 3.94. Even if you never refinanced, your principal and interest is going to be under $1,700. Now, to buy that same home today, you're going to be paying over $500,000 and rates are right around you know, 6.4, give or take, but your payment is going to over you know, double. Yes, you'll have equity, so that's good, but what homeowner wants to buy the same house? Most of them want to upgrade. So if you're going to upgrade, now you're going to be spending close to seven, eight, nine, and then with a the higher rate. Well, a lot of those sellers, they don't want to trade in that low rate. So then they're hanging on to that home, therefore keeping the inventory problem a problem because they don't want to sell their homes. Or they're becoming accidental landlords. They don't want to sell their house, get rid of that low rate. They'll keep it, rent it, and then go buy something. But we're just not seeing those homes come on the market. However, there is some good news for buyers here lately, and that is for FHA buyers. One, FHA buyers, you, know, you have mortgage insurance premium. Um, the mortgage insurance was just reduced, so that will help you save on your monthly payment. Also, the FHA limits have been increased to around $530,000. So good things about FHA is you know needing less money down. I know some people don't have quite the cash on hand, but 3.5% down. And a good thing is if you're using, not just FHA, but you know, any financing, the odds of you getting a concession are greater now than what they were a year ago. So while getting an FHA loan, let's say putting three and a half percent down, getting a concession, getting a lower rate, that helps. And the, right now, the FHA 30-year mortgage is less than a conventional 30-year. So if you're an FHA buyer, this is good news for you. And when I talk about concessions, so in March, 48% of the homes closed, the sellers offered a concession to the buyer. So something to keep in mind, again, if you're worried about where rates are, you know, talk to your lender and understand what type of concession you want. Do you want to just bring less cash to the table? Do you want to use that for a temporary buy down or a full rate buy down for the life of the loan? But getting a concession can really help you as a buyer. I'm calling this market, even though on paper it's a seller's market, I'm just calling it honestly aggressive balanced. And real estate is hyper, hyper local. And here in Phoenix Metro, that is uh, 100% true. So not just against city, but neighborhood, just where it is you want to go. We see a huge change from you know parts of Paradise Valley to parts of Santan Valley to Queen Creek of how strong of a buyer or seller's market it is and vice versa. So understand just what you're seeing you know on a big picture may not be accurate for the exact area you are looking for. And then what we've also been seeing is less price reductions. Now, part of this may be sellers finally got the hint and are pricing homes where they need to be, but 13% price reductions on listings, on new listings over the last week compared to 25% reduced in a week in October. So we're seeing less homes have to reduce their price in order to sell. And more homes are selling closer to the list price. So it may be twofold. Maybe sellers are finally getting the hint that get a clue that you can't just price wherever you want. Also, lack of supply is a huge issue. And you know, I think buyers are also seeing that there isn't many homes and they're becoming more aggressive with their offers. So the crash that everyone wants and is hoping for, it's it just is not here. Not saying it's not going to happen, but 
what we're seeing on a bigger picture, there's no indication is going to happen anytime soon. And just again, using the data I have and what I'm experiencing with my buyers, with my sellers. I mean, we just listed a house in, uh, you know, in the East Valley and you know, we had 20 showings over the weekend. We had four offers and it's just, it is not what is being reported. However, we also did our job in marketing the home, pricing the home where it needs to be and getting it out there to the right people. The homes aren't selling. Well, they're just not doing that. So if you're looking to become one of those successful buyers, successful sellers, let me know. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. It's Rich Brecklin, your Arizona real estate agent.